Hey YouTube, in my last video we defined the six trig ratios and in this video I want to talk about uh, the six trig ratios with respect to the two acute angles in a right triangle because there's a really really cool and nifty theorem called the co-function theorem that we're going to kind of refer back to a lot this year and so I want to kind of point that out here but we say what happens when we find the six trig ratios of angle B for the general triangle that we used in the first example. And of course in the first example we had done uh, the six trig ratios of angle A. And angle A is this base angle down here, we'll call this angle C. And of course uh, if this is big A here, we'll call across from it, we'll call it lowercase a, we'll call this lowercase b, we'll call this lowercase c. But what I want to kind of point out is this, using SOHCAHTOA, you know, we had found in the last video sine, cosine, tangent, and then the three reciprocal uh, ratios of angle A. What I want to do this time is go and look at uh, the trig ratios of angle B, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a comparison of these. So what I want you to notice is I've already worked out in this list up here, I already did SOHCAHTOA for these first three for angle B. So for instance, when we say sine of angle B, we say, what is the sine of angle B? I notice I get B over C, and the way I got this was sine. Remember, sine is so opposite over hypotenuse. I get uh, B over C because I took my opposite side over my hypotenuse side. So B over C, and likewise with sine of or cosine of angle B, we say cosine of angle B would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so A over C. I just want you to see that I'm getting these things here. Uh, the interesting thing about it is this. If we took the sine of angle B, for instance, here we say sine of angle B, we would have gotten this, opposite over hypotenuse. So we say the sine of angle B would be B over C. But if we were to go over here to this other angle now, not angle B, but the other acute angle in this triangle, okay, and we were to actually find not the sine of this, but the cosine of this. Let's go find the cosine of A. What you're going to find is this. The cosine of A, ka, would be adjacent over hypotenuse. And adjacent to our hypotenuse here is B, and hypotenuse here is C. So I would get the same thing as if I had taken the sine of B. So the interesting thing is this. The cosine of A equals the sine of B. So the cosine of one angle equals the sine of the other angle. Would this work if we had done the cosine of B to begin with? So the cosine of B, ka, we say adjacent over hypotenuse. Here's angle B. What is adjacent to B? And it'd be this leg A. A. Adjacent to B is A over hypotenuse C. So what if I were to now go do the sine of, of angle A? Okay, what would I get? So the sine of angle A would be opposite over hypotenuse. And you can see that we're comparing the same sides, okay? So the interesting thing about it is this. The sine of one acute angle is the cosine of the other. And the cosine of one, uh, you know, of one is the other. And this is, uh, you know, a relationship that exists not between just sine and cosine, but tangent and cotangent and secant and cosecant. So let's go ahead and kind of elaborate on this a little bit. One thing I do want to mention is this. When you talk about the angles in a triangle, we know that we have, uh, in a, at least in a right triangle, 90 degrees right here. And then we say they all add or sum to 90 degrees. Okay, If we were to add up all the angles in a triangle, they all add up to 90 degrees. So what this means is these two angles right here, they have to be complementary. And remember what we mean by complementary angles. They have to add up to 90 degrees because, well, if they add up to 90 and this is 90 here, then we have 180 total degrees. But the thing I want to mention here is this. <clears throat> the cofunction theorem basically says this. Well, if, you know, if you're taking the sine of this and you get the same thing as the cosine of this, and you're taking the sine of this and getting the same thing as the cosine of this, then we think that the sine or cosine of complementary angles have to always be equal. And that's essentially what we're going to say up here in the cofunction theorem. And it says this, a trig function of any angle is always equal to the cofunction, we'll talk about that word, cofunction of the complement of the angle. So in other words, given some right triangle here, where you have two angles A and B, and we say they're the complementary angles in this right triangle, so they add up to 90, then we could say if A and B add up to 90 degrees, then the sine of A would be the cosine of B. So in other words, the sine of this one would be the same as the cosine of this one if they're complementary angles. Okay. So for instance here, let's put it this way. Let's say A is 30 degrees. What would B have to be in the first place? Think about this. You know, if these are complementary angles, this would have to be 60 degrees. But in other words, what this means is, if I were to take the cosine of 30 degrees of this angle, I would get the same thing as the sine of 60 degrees. So in long, long story short here, we'll put this into text actually. We say this. We say cofunctions of complementary angles are equivalent because 
if I were to do the sine of this or the cosine of this, you're going to compare the same sides anyways, then we can always use this relationship that co-functions of complementary, complementary angles are equivalent. So essentially what we could say is this. We could say up here in this statement here, sine of what would equal the cosine of 30? Well, I know that sine and cosine, I'm seeing this relationship between these two acute angles here with sine and cosine. Uh, they would be equivalent if these were complementary angles. So the sine of 60 would be the same thing as the cosine of 30 because one, 60 and 30 add up to 90, okay? And two, sine and cosine are co-functions, okay? So let's go ahead and be clear on another thing here. We say co-functions. This is our list of co-functions right here. And we say co-functions are any functions that if you were to take the function of one angle and then go take the other one of its complement, you would get the same thing. So we say sine and cosine are co-functions. In other words, the sine of one angle is always the cosine of its complement. Likewise, since secant and cosecant are just the reciprocals of sine and cosine respectively, then the secant of an angle is always equal to the cosecant of its complement. And tangent and cotangent happen to be co-functions. And we say that the tangent of an angle is equal to the cotangent of its complement. So using these co-function laws here, we're going to go down here and fill out the rest of these two. They're pretty easy to do. We'll start with letter C actually first, but we say the secant of 75 would be the same thing as its co-function, cosecant of what? So we have to ask ourselves this question, well, what is complementary to 75? And what we could really do is this. We could say, well, 90 degrees take away 75 degrees, that would leave behind the angle that we're looking for here, theta. So we would say that this is 15 degrees left over for the angle theta here. But one thing I want to point out is this. We could say complementary to 75, what we're really asking is this. What could we add on to 75 degrees to get it to add up to 90 degrees? And you can see that I was able to get this expression here that we got in the last phrase just by subtracting that and getting the same value here. So we say theta is equal to 15 degrees. So we say 15 degrees. Now, do we have to go through all that work? No, honestly, we could have just said secant and cosecant are cofunctions. Well, then the secant of 75 is equal to the cosecant of 15 because these are complementary and these are cofunctions. But it does kind of play into this next one over here. We say, well, tangent and cotangent are cofunctions. So these would be equal if and only if y and its complement we're in these spots. So we say, well, what's complementary to y? We could ask this question. We could say y plus what angle theta equals 90 degrees, just like we did over here. And the long story short is we could say this. Well, if I want theta, we could subtract y from both sides. And what we get is this. The angle I'm looking for is equal to 90 degrees minus y. So if this was our theta right here, this angle we were looking for, then we'd say then the complement to this would be 90 minus y degrees. And that works. I mean, you could check this. You could say, well, what if y equals 10 degrees? If you plugged in a 10 degrees right here, well, you'd have to plug in a 10 over here for y, but what's 90 minus 10? Well, then there's your 80 degrees. And 80 and 10 right here, 10 and 80, those would be complementary. So that's the cofunction theorem that just says that cofunctions of complementary angles always have to be the same. Cheers.